Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the KitchenAid ProLine Series 7 Quart Bowl Lift Stand Mixer. This is the biggest residential KitchenAid mixer you can buy. As you can see, it is a large unit and will take up a lot of counter space. It weighs 25 pounds, so it's a good idea to find a spot for it before you get it. It's 16 and a half inches tall, 13 and a third inches wide, and 14 and a half inches deep. You can see the head is pretty much at the height of my cabinets. The head does not tilt up like some other KitchenAid models, so you don't have to worry about the extra height. It's not gonna fit under most kitchen cabinets. This model is available in about six colors. This is the gorgeous candy apple red color, and it is absolutely stunning to look at. Except for a few little nicks on the bottom, the paint is nearly perfect. The bowl is stainless steel, it's a little bit heavy, but it has a nice big handle that makes it more comfortable to use. If you've watched my other KitchenAid videos, especially the one after the uh, four and a half quart model, you already know that um, there were several issues with the stainless steel bowl. Mainly the gray residue that's in the bowl, so you have to wash it a couple of times to get it off. I'm happy to say there was no gray residue with this bowl. I just washed it once with soap and water, and that's all I had to do, which is how it should be with every bowl. Of course, the advantage of this large mixer is that you can make a huge quantity of dough, cookie dough, cake batter, whatever you're baking. You can mix dough for up to 14 dozen cookies in this bowl. This unit comes with 11 wire elliptical stainless steel whip, a flat beater that's coated so you can wash it in the dishwasher. Some other models come with burnished attachments that you cannot put in the dishwasher, you have to hand wash it. This is really convenient, you can put it in the dishwasher and not worry about it changing color. A coated dough hook is included. The three attachments and the stainless steel bowl are dishwasher safe. Also included is this plastic pouring shield. This can be washed in the top rack of your dishwasher. It simply slides on and sits on the bowl. You can move it around. The chute is large so it's easier to add flour or any other ingredients without making a mess. Unscrew the attachment knob, lift up the cover, and you can insert many KitchenAid attachments. Some of the attachments you can use are the pasta roller, food grinder, grain mill, sausage maker. This is the bowl lift lever. Pull it down to lower the bowl. Add your ingredients. Attach whichever attachment you're using. Go straight up and turn right over the little pin on the shaft. Lift the lever, the bowl will lock and you can turn on the machine. There are 10 speeds. Always start at a low speed and go up. When you're done mixing, lower the lever, hold the bowl by the handle and lift up. The bowl sits on these two pins on the sides and the back of the bowl goes right into this hole. To attach the bowl, put it over the pins and push down until it locks. This is the beater height adjustment screw. The unit's already been adjusted, so the paddle should just clear the bottom of the bowl. If the paddle is hitting the bottom of your bowl or is too high, you can adjust the screw by turning it clockwise or counterclockwise. The screw can be turned a quarter turn or 90 degrees in either direction. Put the bowl up to check the beater clearance. It's just clearing the bottom, so it looks good. An instruction manual is included. It gives you a speed control guide, which is helpful. Also some bread making tips. We'll make a butter cookie dough, a double batch, which should make 10 dozen cookies. I'll be using two cups plus four tablespoons of softened butter. Put that into the bowl. Two and a half cups powdered sugar, two egg yolks, salt, vanilla extract, Attach the paddle, lift up the bowl. There's a lot of powdered sugar in here, so start very slow. We'll mix this until smooth. So the highest speed I used was four. I don't see any unmixed powdered sugar on the bottom or the middle of the bowl, which is good. There's no unmixed powdered sugar on the side. I didn't sift my powdered sugar, so there are a little bit of lumps, but that's okay because we're gonna mix it into the flour. Now I'll add five and a half cups of all-purpose flour. This is 
a good opportunity to use the pouring shield, so I'll try that. That looks good. Comes together nicely. Lower the lever. Scrape down the sides. Just lift up to remove the bowl. I don't really see any flour on the bottom. It's all been mixed in. You can definitely keep going and it will just bring this together. I'll make four discs out of this dough, wrap it and refrigerate it for a couple of hours. Then I can roll it out and make cookies. Flatten the dough into a disc, wrap it in plastic wrap and chill in the refrigerator for at least two hours. If you keep mixing, it'll really clean up the bowl and almost form a ball on its own. I don't like to over mix it, that's why I took it out a little bit early. But I just want to show you that you can get this result also. Came together really nicely. These are going to make a lot of butter cookies. So if you bake a lot, this size will be perfect for you. I'll whip two and a half cups of cream. Start at low speed and go all the way up to speed eight. This is for my Black Forest cake recipe that I'll put up soon on my other channel, Anita Cooks. If you wanna see that cake, I'll put a link in the description below. Powdered sugar. After almost three minutes, you have soft peaks. I increased the speed from eight to 10 after two minutes because um, at speed eight, the cream was not whipping as fast as it should. I need stiff peaks for my cake, so I'm gonna whip this for a few more seconds. And that looks good. Again, the bowl is huge, so you can easily whip double the amount. Stiff peaks. Now I'll make pizza dough using the dough hook. Don't go above speed two when using the dough hook. I'll put two packets of active dry yeast into the bowl. Water at around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And sugar. Leave this for five minutes to let the yeast dissolve. The yeast has dissolved. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil, salt, flour. I'm gonna add two cups first. Attach the dough hook and stir it. Another cup of flour, one more cup, four cups total, a lot more flour if I need to. Now all the flour is mixed in. I'll knead this for seven to ten minutes until it forms a smooth dough. It's been seven minutes, so I'm gonna turn off the machine. I didn't use any more flour, just the four cups. You can see the dough is nice and smooth. It's a little sticky, but that's how I want it. Makes for a nicer pizza crust. Oil a bowl. Really beautiful, soft, smooth dough. Oil it. Cover it 
and it'll be ready in a little while to make pizza. So you saw how easy it was to make pizza dough in the KitchenAid. There's literally no work for you to do, no kneading at the end, nothing. You just put all the ingredients in and the machine does the work for you. As for the clicking sound, KitchenAid says that the clicking during heavy mixing is not unusual. And you'll hear it more in the 7 and 8 quart mixers because they have DC motors which are quieter. If you watch my reviews of other KitchenAids, like the mini, the 4.5 quart, the 5 quart, you won't hear the clicking sounds. Each mixer is going to make different sounds, and the clicking is normal with this mixer. If you hear any other sounds, like grinding or knocking, that's not normal. The 7 quart didn't make any other noises except the clicking during the kneading. If you want to buy this KitchenAid, I'll put a link right below the video. You saw how the 7 quart performed, making a large batch of cookie dough, whipped cream, and pizza dough. It's the largest KitchenAid you can buy for your home, so of course it'll take up some space. But if you plan on making large quantities, then this is a good model for you. It'll save you time from doing multiple small batches. The dough is risen beautifully. Now I can make lots of pizza. As always, I hope you found this review helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews. Wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I'll see you next year. Thanks for watching.